Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to Toro College of Osteopathic Medicine. Uh, and uh, I would like to welcome you to the Fireside Chat uh, organized by the Research Department of our college. Fireside Chat is an informal gathering of faculty, researchers, scientists, students that we hold usually once a week on Wednesdays in one of our conference rooms upstairs. And it's completely informal gathering to the point that not even ties are allowed. And this is around the fire. The uh, city of New York fire department has no sense of humor and they are not allowing us to have a real fire. So we have to make do with a genuine imitation in a digital form. Um, this time we have a meeting here in the lecture hall because we expect a much larger turnout that uh, our little room upstairs would not hold. So, and occasion for it is quite unique. Today we have the honor of having a presentation by Dr. Thomas Finley who is a guru and a giant in uh, fascia research. He's a specialist in uh, physical medicine, physical therapy, and a lot of other things. And it's a truly great honor here to have him here to talk about fascia and especially of the subject of uh, link between the fascia research and uh, all the standards of the osteopathic medicine. Okay? Dr. Finley? Well, thank you very much. I'm, I'm delighted to be here at uh, Turo. Uh, my daughter was in the first class from Turo, so I, I've been uh, involved with Turo from the very beginning, <coughs> and uh, I'm delighted to be working with Turo. I, I guess uh, if I'd known about osteopathic medicine, I would have gone to a DO school, but uh, I didn't, so uh, I did the next best thing. Um, I uh, became a faculty member in the osteopathic school in New Jersey, and uh, now I work at the Veterans Hospital. So I'm, I'm glad to be here to talk about not just fascia, but the perspective from A.T. Still from 100 years ago. So uh, I'd like to acknowledge Fred Humphrey, the dean in the osteopathic school, who hired me to start a research institute back in the mid-1990s. Uh, he had the foresight to see that something like this was important. Um, it was 10 years too early. Uh, there just wasn't enough information out to bring it together, but now there is. And Leon Chetow is an osteopath uh, in England who's been very supportive and helpful in developing these concepts. Jeff Bove at the Osteopathic School in uh, New England. Mike Kucheria, who's now at Marion University. Brian Degethart from A.T. Still, and of course Robert Goldberg from, from Turo. And my wife, who uh, puts up with all these things that I do. <coughs> That's important. So. The publications on fascia have increased a great deal over the past 20 years. If you look back in the 1960s and 1970s, there were maybe a few hundred papers every year, and now there's almost a thousand papers uh, on fascia indexed in the medical literature. So it's just growing exponentially. Now feel free as I'm going along to raise your hands if I don't see you, you know, wave at me. Uh, sometimes I get very much involved in what I'm talking about, but I, I'd like to stop and explain things as we go along. So, for, for some of you may know, but a background for Andrew Taylor Still was a physician in the mid, uh, eight, mid to late 1800s. He called himself an anatomy mechanic uh, in his private clinic in Kirksville, Missouri. He rejected the ineffectual drugs and, and a lot of the ineffectual surgery of the day and he uh, opened a, a school of osteopathic medicine in 1892 and, and published his philosophy of osteopathy. And uh, to, to, to paraphrase from Iron Man, where the uh, weapons designer is caught in a cave in Afghanistan by some rebels and he builds himself a robotic suit to escape, and the evil man wants to replicate his suit and he's telling a scientist, why can't you build this? Tony Stark built this in a cave in Afghanistan. So my response is A.T. Still observed this in a clinic in Kirksville, Missouri. So let's go back 100 years. What are the body principles of A.T. Still? He's talking about the human body as a total biological unit. And the body possesses self-healing and regulatory mechanisms. That structure and function are interrelated and abnormal pressure in one part of the body produces abnormal pressures and strains in other parts of the body. It's all connected. And that's what we're learning with the fascia, is there is a network of connection uh, from one end to the other of the body. The key concepts of A.T. Still 
are that fascia is a covering. He talks some about the terminology of fascia, fascia and sliding, fascia and fluid flow, fascia and innervation, and fascia and respiration. And I'll go through each one of these point by point and tell you what his concepts were and what we know today. So fascia is a covering. Um, in one of your handouts, you have the, um, the chapters on fascia from his texts. I managed to download the text, and so you actually got that. Uh, and you can read that in some detail if you're interested. But I pulled a few quotes out from those things he's written. And so when he talks about fascia as a covering, he states that fascia seethes, permeates, divides, and subdivides every portion of all animal bodies, surrounding and penetrating every muscle and all its fibers, every artery and every fiber. You don't see it when you open an anatomy book because it's been scraped away. When you go to the body's exhibit, it's been scraped away. But it's been scraped off everything. Fascia covers everything in the body. So if you look at the muscle, you have the, uh, the epimysium on the outside of the muscle, the paramysium and the endomysium with the muscle fascicles. There's a connection from the endomysium within the muscle fiber. There's connections from the epimysium to the tendon to distal fascia. There's force transmission between neighboring muscles. And there's force transmission via the vascular bundle to antagonistic muscles. And I'll show you pictures of each of these. And feel free to wave your hand because um, a lot of this information I've had to go through six or seven times, and some of it's still over my head. I try to explain as best I can. So schematic diagram of the muscle. So on the outside of the muscle, we have the epimysium. You can remember because epidermis is the skin, epi is the outside. And then you have the sections of the muscle <coughs> divided by the paramysium, and then the individual muscle fascicles here surrounded by the endomysium. And within those, you have the little muscle fibers and myofibers.